so everybody, welcome back to Swift Lessons. Um, today, I'm really excited to be joined by Spencer Handley, a great guitar player that I met out in California while at PatreCon. And um, uh, sometime after I started watching him play uh, guitar on Facebook, I was blown away by his technique and uh, also his approach to teaching. And so today we're just gonna have a conversation about how to maximize your practice time. So yeah, let, let's kick this off. Um, how do you get your mind right before going into a practice session? Yeah, so what I like to do before I practice is sort of like, first get into the body. Music is a kinesthetic skill, just like it is a mental skill. You wanna pull your, your head out of whatever you were doing and get more into the present moment so that you can absorb the information most efficiently. One of the things I wanted to mention too is just like making sure that you're hydrated. Yeah. That's like uh, a, lot of, a lot of people don't think about their hydration. There you go. You know, you feel it when you go to the gym. If, you, if, you're, if you're dehydrated, you go into the gym, you're gonna perform so much worse. And the same thing is true on the guitar. And a lot of times I have a lot of uh, mental fog and it's really just because like of just not taking time to take care of my body. Yeah, one thing that's really important going into the practice session is having a clear idea of what it is that you're going to actually practice that day and have that be, you know, small amount of content. You really only want to tackle a couple of things in each practice session, even if you're spending an hour or two in the practice room. Okay, and you also mentioned that you do a little, a little bit of improv uh, when you're first sitting down with the guitar? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think our tendency would be to hop right into the work of the practice session, the technique stuff, because we want to make that mm -hmm. progress. But what I found is actually better for warming up the mind is just improvise for five minutes. And that gets the mind into sort of a pliable state and it also warms up the fingers. Okay. Oftentimes I'll just, I'll just, I'll just play a tune. Yeah. Something that I feel like is going to kind of boost my morale. A little yeah. bit. I think a lot of uh, a lot of people like they they compartmentalize their practice in a way where it's like okay theory first, and then technique here, and then this here. Whereas I think it should all be mixed together yeah. throughout the practice session. Yeah. So when I'm when I'm doing my scales, I'm I'm singing the note names. As a side note, with the uh, metronome, it's a really good practice tool because you can see like what what speed you're comfortable playing at. Yeah. And you did a great video breaking that down. Hey music nerds, my name is Spencer and today I'm going to show you a technique called the spider metronome. Yeah, another thing that is really cool to do with time is we can push it forward or we can pull it back. You can mm -hmm. try and nail the metronome right on the head, so like perfectly square notes. And then you can swing it yeah. or you can syncopate it. And then another thing you yeah. can try is like, what does it feel like to lunge a little bit ahead of the metronome and anticipate it by a few milliseconds? What does it feel like to be slightly mm. behind? And that becomes immediately mm -hmm. relevant when you're playing with a band because when you're soloing, there's nothing more filthy than playing slightly behind the band. And the, oh, fe yeah. the feeling of that is just so rich. And so practicing that skill in the practice room will allow you to go out on stage and really like emote. Uh, and in my own personal notes, I think it's really important for musicians to seek out the guidance of more accomplished players whenever possible. Like for example, yourself, you know, me meeting you out in California was a you know, really great thing for me because just watching you picking on something on Facebook and then I went and wrote a solo for one of my uh, tunes called The Follower. Yeah. That was, and it was like, I was very, I was like super inspired by like some of the licks that you were playing. I was like, I'm going to go push myself today to write something really nice and melodic. Oh, cool. um, so yeah, when you have those opportunities to sit down with another guitar player, especially one that's more accomplished than you, really take it. Okay, so one, one other idea here it comes from the world of language acquisition. At one point, mm -hmm. I learned Mandarin Chinese. And one thing that wow. people use in language acquisition is when they're learning new vocabulary, they try and go out in the wild and use it at least once or twice that day. This is the interesting part. They try and do it in situations that would be embarrassing. Uh, and the reason mm. for that is the mind retains information in peak experiences. So if you're learning new yeah. techniques or new licks, try and use them as soon as possible. Um, if you don't have an opportunity, then create one. Write a song, plan a recording session, and start putting your stuff to work as soon as possible. So there are like three stages in the life cycle of a skill. And I use the uh, analogy of uh, building a rocket ship. There's the first stage, which I call research and development. Research and development means uh, you're trying to figure out how the lick works. And it's usually too much information for the brain to think about all at once. And that is where you use chunking. And chunking is where you take that longer phrase and you just break it into a bunch of smaller pieces. So if it's a 10 note mm. phrase, you break it into five two note phrases and you just learn two notes at a time and then you stitch all of those smaller phrases together 
until it becomes the larger phrase. So you might do the first and second chunk, glue those together until it's a four note chunk, then do the next one, the next one, and the next one. And that way you're not looking at it as one big phrase, but rather a bunch of small pieces. So there's the strategy of chunking to get through research and development. The next stage is called building a rocket. And this is where you're really trying to like polish up the skill and make it really nice. You want that rocket to be really well engineered because you want to be able to trust it so that when you go into space, mm -hmm. it's not going to break down on you and you understand how the whole thing works. So there's a couple of strategies right. to use. The first one that I always recommend is called the feedback loop. And the way that it works is you get a recording device, like a, you can just use a recorder on your phone and your metronome, and you just record yourself playing it. And then what you do is you put the instrument aside and you listen to that recording and you take note of what went well, what, what went poorly, objectively. If this were somebody else playing this, what would I think? When you listen to it and get that feedback, then you want to sit down with the instrument again and implement whatever improvements you uh, noted in, in the listening section. And then you just repeat mm -hmm. that feedback loop a bunch of times. So if you're working on a skill that you already understand in your hands, just feedback loop it for 15 minutes and by the end of that, that skill will be so polished, it'll be at a really high level. So there are two strategies in building a rocket. There's the feedback loop and interleaving. Interleaving is when we take all of the concepts in our practice session and we interleave them with one another. So we don't practice one technique for an hour straight because there's diminishing returns and the brain won't absorb all of the information. So what we do is we, we practice one technique for 15 minutes and then we practice the next technique for 15 minutes and we might go back to the original one. And the reason for that is the brain does a lot of sort of synthesizing the information while we're not focusing on it. So we integrate mm, that, those right. original learnings while we're focused on something else. You've had this experience probably of, you know, you practice something and you put down your guitar for even 20 minutes and you go like grab a coffee and you come back and suddenly yeah. like your hands understand it a little bit better. Yeah. Sometimes even I'll struggle toward the end of my practice session, yeah. put down the guitar and then I get up the next day, yeah. pick up the guitar and it's like butter. And I'm like, how, there. you know, what happened? How do I get it now? Yeah, it's sort of the same as like a workout. All of the muscle growth mm. that happens doesn't happen in the gym. It happens when you're resting. And the same right. thing is true for the brain. So interleaving is a way of sort of intentionally inserting that rest period in between exercises. Yeah. And what's cool about interleaving is you don't actually have to remove yourself from the guitar entirely. You just focus on something else and the interleaving process mm -hmm. will take care of itself. So it's counterintuitive because you would think that if you want to get to the end of a skill, you want to get it to mastery, you just plow right through it. The opposite's the case. It's like an easier route to, to mastery of these skills. So that's another thing that I would highly recommend is interleaving. Uh, and then finally, the last phase of this life cycle of a skill is uh, launch and orbit. So launch is when the thing kind of gets to what we would call mastery. Obviously that's subjective, but we'll call it like highly proficient. We've gotten to a point where we can kind of do the thing without thinking too much. And what we do there is the spaced repetition. So practice a technique a day after you master it, three days after you master it, a week after you master it, a month, and then three months. This is like the scientifically proven uh, interval to prevent memory decay, then mm -hmm. you, you'll retain this information in perpetuity forever. And that's really the whole gotcha. life cycle of a skill in a nutshell. And if you follow all these steps and use these strategies, you'll get unblocked from sort of the sticking points of learning a skill. Uh, some folks might be wondering, how do you know that you've mastered something? Yeah. For me, um, I know that I have a guitar technique down when I can hold a conversation with somebody as I'm playing it. I love that. That's like the that's, highest level I think great. for me. Yeah. And I think the other thing to keep in mind is like, you know, I, I run this thing called the Guitar Mastery Intensive. And mastery is a very mm. Mm, abstract term. It's very subjective and it's it doesn't technically exist because everything is just a spectrum of knowledge. And every skill that you learn right. is a lifelong endeavor. But there are these like right. thresholds the that you hit along the way. And one of them is this that mm. you just talked about, like being able to just execute it while your brain is doing some other thing. That is a threshold at which you could call something quote unquote mastered. So when we talk about like how to structure practice, we've really got these like mm -hmm. main stages of, of a practice session that we've talked about. You know, we talked about having a clear plan, having a bit of a warm up. We talked about sitting down and improvising for a bit and just kind of being more free form in the beginning. Then we talked about reviewing uh, some content based on space repetition, then kind of diving mm -hmm. into the techniques and making the progress on the new concepts that we want to make. 
The last thing I would encourage folks to do is end the session with play. I just always end my practice sessions with fun so that I never have this association of like practice as work. That's a great and a great way to kind of kind of come down too. Yeah. Um, so what's next for you? Uh, right now you're out in, uh, in Bali? Yeah, I'm in Bali right now. I'll be here for a few more months and then I'm going to go study some flamenco guitar in Spain. I'm going to go to Granada, Spain and get my right hand technique together. So I'm sure everybody can see that you're a true student of and, and passionate about the guitar and you're chasing down all these techniques. Oh, I love it, man. I love it. It's my it's my greatest passion. So where can everybody keep up to date with you? Yeah, uh, but I want I want everyone to hear you play. So yeah. where, where do they go for that? Yeah, so I post lots of stuff on Instagram, YouTube, and my Facebook page. And we'll, we'll link to all of that down in the description below. The other thing to check out is I run a thing called the Guitar Mastery Intensive. It's a three-month program that helps sort of beginning and intermediate students somewhere in that sweet spot get to a really high level on guitar really quickly. So it's a whole curriculum, daily lesson plans, a lot of mentorship and feedback, and it's designed to sort of accelerate your growth on guitar, and it's a straight path through the guitar. Is it genre specific? No, it is a non-idiomatic approach to guitar. So our goal for our students is for them to become linguistic with the guitar. So you learn okay. the core of music, how the thing functions, and then the idea is if you want to play any style, any idiom, you just learn the rhythm mm -hmm. and the sort of stylistic elements of that idiom. So the, the course is facilitated by myself and my teacher who's an incredible guitar player, mm -hmm. Isla Cantor. And uh, mm -hmm. after I studied with her, I was able to play in salsa bands. I played West African music. I played Hindustani music. Mm -hmm. I just spent time in Nepal playing uh, Indian classical music. So it's really like my dream course. It's exactly what I wanted growing up. And it's a really fast path through guitar mastery. Yeah. Well, we'll be sure to uh, put all these links for everybody down in the description. Um, yeah. As for me, you know, more of the same. Lots of lessons coming up, lots of videos, uh, song tutorials, uh, and uh, also some new music uh, with my new band, Domini, and some new original music on top of that. All right, everyone, this is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons signing off. Expect many more videos coming up, and uh, make sure that you're subscribed and that you've rung that bell for notifications. Catch you later.